Uh, Professor Shanmugam, you've had a long and illustrious uh, career at IIT Madras, uh, spanning over 45 years or so. And uh, um, so we will start from the time that you first came to IIT Madras as a research scholar. Yeah, uh, that was in August 1973, a date I don't remember exactly. So before that I had casual visits to IIT, but that was a visit where I joined the PhD program and um, the same day I went to Gymkhana and then I said I am also a volleyball player and then uh, same evening I had to play in a league match. So I was uh, not at all fit, having done project for one year and lost uh, about 10 pounds of weight. So, but still uh, I played and uh, we won the match also. That is my first you know, uh, day in IIT campus. And uh, all the students you know, lifted me up. And then uh, one per person, one student said something uh, which I cannot repeat, but he said, you play very well, da. Then I understood that IIT Metra slang it's in appreciation, <laughs> can have bad words also. <laughs> so that was my first uh, entry. But uh, the thing is, uh, the people accepted me. In fact, acceptance was something I was looking for. When I entered IIT also, I said, this is a great institution, whether I'll be really accepted here, whether I can uh, live on to their expectation. But first day itself, I got acceptance from the students' community. So was this a hostile match? Uh, you know, inter intercollegiate match, intercollegiate match. Uh, okay. against Stanley. Those days, few colleges used to be grouped together and we played. Okay. So which hostel were you in when you first came as a research scholar? <laughs> That's a, as a research scholar, I was supposed to go to PG hostel or Krishna or Kaveri. Uh, but then when I went to the warden and they said no rooms for you on the same day, only I went, but then uh, by the time the news that I have my volleyball player, so immediately uh, the captain of volleyball team, institute captain was in Tapti. He contacted our Professor V.C. Venkatesh, our uh, section head. Those days we had only one section, that's a production engineering section. Uh, then uh, he called me. So I went in, said, have you got your hostel room? No, sir, I am looking for a PG hostel accommodation. I said, no, you are staying in Tapti. Sir, Tapti is undergraduate hostel. Uh, do you think you are going to do research here in my section? Then I understood. Okay. So I said, not, uh, no, I know. In fact, before joining this program itself, I know I was, uh, bit, I didn't know what the research is all about. Academics, I know. B, I could uh, do L, ME also. But research is a new game. The rules of the game was not known. So my intention was that let me try for some time. If I am successful, let me continue. So I took the challenge and then joined. So that was an undergraduate hostel. What was your Room number 124, like? ground floor. <laughs> what was your experience like with the undergraduates in the hostel? In fact, initially I thought, you know, I may not fit in there, but uh, soon after I joined, there was a strike for a long duration. If I remember for nearly two months, the hostel employees went on strike. Food was not cooked. You know, those days hostels, every hostel had mess. There's nothing like common mess now. So people were uh, getting food from outside, cleaning the vessels, taking by turn. So every wing. They told me that, sir, you don't have to do anything, you know. They would so call you, they, sir. Uh -huh. The, the, the first day it was a different thing in the game, but then uh, said you don't have to come out and do anything, just be there. So wing by wing they did, they didn't trouble me at all. But those two months, the classes were held, but uh, I could also concentrate on my research. So no other activity. So we can say you got the royal treatment from day one. Yes. And not only that, I won a volleyball trophy for them in the intra-hostel. Uh, then there was a tournament conducted by Krishna Hostel, my name Rajappa Trophy. There was a professor who instituted the trophy. That also I won. So during the uh, hostel day, 
I was given a special price of 250 rupees those days. <laughs> <laughs> quite a feat. Ah, yes. Quite a thing now. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So tell us more about your, uh, you know, the lab uh, as it was then. You know, you have uh, over the years, you know, from the time uh, from being a research scholar in uh, mechanical engineering, um, you know, you reach the highest post in the department uh, as the head of the department. Uh, you've donned uh, many hats, uh, both at the department and at the uh, institute uh, level. Um, so it would be nice to hear about uh, uh, your various experiences. Though I joined as a research scholar in 73, I didn't continue to be a research scholar for long. Uh, it's not that I quit the program. Uh, when I joined the program, my mother took a you know, promise from me that I should get married. Then I said, I am entering into a new game that's called research. If I am successful, within six months, I will be able to. But otherwise, give me time. So in the three months period, initial period where there was a strike also, I could do research with full concentration, publish a paper in an international journal. And then uh, the, the manuscript which, was, which I gave to my professor, Professor V. Radhakrishnan, not even one correction was made. I said, hey, what is this? Is whether I have done it properly or didn't like to correct it. But it went through. And uh, then I said, OK, I know this game. I can play this game well. So that's the started. I gave my consent to look for a girl. And uh, I got married in uh, 2000, I mean, 1974. One year later, so in June, within a year, a published. Published. one more paper was also there when I got married also. Two papers, and uh, so my marriage was on June 26th. So immediately after marriage, you have to stay with your parents and the, the wife, newly wedded wife. And uh, within two, three months, I also, he also suggested that I should take up a job in the department. See, there was a requirement of uh, teaching uh, drawing teachers. So those days in your section, now it's called MTS, it was called Machine Elements uh, and Material, hand, uh, material Handling. And uh, they were actually uh, having an arrangement where four people were selected as STA within bracket drawing. So that post we will not see now. Uh, then uh, we were uh, asked, so then I applied. Uh, the interviewers were to uh, we held, but then I did not get the interview call. So Friday, I came to know from others that they got a call, but I did not get. And when I told Professor Radha Akshan, I, you know, he said, wait, I'll go to the administration. He went in and came out by 5.30 also. You can attend the interview on Monday. Sir, I don't have an interview letter. How can I attend? Just go in and you will. So Monday, I still remember Professor Parameshwaran was there. Professor Balraman was there. And uh, so they interviewed me. First thing they told, your load will be very high. 20 hours of drawing in a week. So that means I had to handle three sessions. I, you, know, you know those drawing those days. You were in the fourth year group or a five-year five group? Four-year. Four-year group. Four year. Uh, no, those days was five-year group. So four semesters of drawing plus additional uh, lab, afternoon lab. Then I was also married. Another required thing. Then I was also doing my research. OK. So three things I had to balance. Balancing two things will be easier, but three things will be a little odd. But hopefully I managed. And uh, I completed my PhD exactly in three years. Uh, by August 15th. It was 15th August is a holiday, but still the interview was held. I mean, the viva was held on uh, 15th, and uh, I got the degree in the next week convocation itself. Wow. Is that some kind of a record? Uh, we cannot <laughs> say, I complete, accomplished my mission. That's all. Mm. So <laughs> that, is, that is quite a story for uh, that. I uh, think uh, right. today's research scholars uh, should definitely uh, uh, then, take. Uh, but then, this STA position was in Machine Elements Lab, MEMH Lab. 
uh, whereas I was a research scholar in the production engineering. So you were allowed to work as a research scholar. You were allowed to work. Yes, part time. converted into part time. Part time. So I continued, but uh, this uh, now if I had continue, I had to continue in Mission Elements Lab only. The position is in Mission Elements Lab. Uh, then uh, I wanted to come back to my specialization, manufacturing. Uh, then there was an opportunity for me to meet uh, IIT Bombay professors in one of the conferences in Delhi. I still remember. After my presentation, those two professors, one professor Somasundram, one professor Ramasamy, both you know, very pleasant people came. Are you interested in a position in IIT Bombay? I just looked at them, what made them think? Because they knew my break, uh, background. So I said, yes, I will try. So there was an interview. Uh, of course, this time with a call letter <laughs> at IIT Bombay. <laughs> I went for the interview. I was selected. So I left, quit the job here at IIT Madras, I joined IIT Bombay, initially as a lecturer only, because there was no opening for anybody to go from SGA to lecturer automatically. But very interestingly, within six months, all those people who joined along with me, they became lecturers. And just to recall, you may know some of the names, Professor Jay Prakash, and uh, I know at the time he was an uh, professor, Muthuvirappan, and Kupusami. So Kupusami is uh, no more. So the, all of them became uh, no, uh, lecturer, whereas I had to change the uh, institution to become a lecturer. But no regrets, because that was a new environment. I learned a lot. In fact, uh, they gave so much independence. In fact, you can just walk into director's room and sit before him. Uh, it can't be thought of anywhere else. So three years, I became associate assistant professor also. Um, then uh, I was applied for a position here. Why did you want to come back here? Okay. Mm. From what you say, it seemed like... Uh, yeah, it, it was a good place, but... Um, Facilities were not, uh, uh, they were coming up at that time. So they had collaboration with a different country. And our collaboration was Germany. We had uh, IBM 370 here. In fact, I worked on IBM 370 for all my PhD work. And uh, whereas uh, in IIT Bombay, we had EC 1030. So that was a Russian computer. So if you had to uh, know, get your program read, you had to really boot the system physically boot the system, then it will read the cards. Anyway, this is a joke apart. It was not at all the kind of system I used to. Then they were, there was a good arrangement. Uh, Dicton was there in TAFR, Tata Fundamental Research. Then uh, every Tuesday bus will leave. So I used to go with them, but the productivity was very low. That's one thing. But if I had continued, I could have uh, managed professionally also. But then the family pressures were there. I'm quite attached to my mother. So naturally, when you weigh this part of it is quite heavy. So Madras became my point to move. So that's all, nothing else. And in fact, I made so much friendship there, acquaintance there. Everyone knew. And I was a secretary for the Tamil Cultural Association in Bombay, IIT Bombay. And uh, every family knew me. And uh, even now, if I go, they recognize me. Okay. Even though I left IIT Bombay, I go there very often. They invite me. So that was the thing. Then I came back. So how was it coming back here as faculty? Actually, uh, it, it was good, um, but uh, there are people who are uh, already there uh, as lecturers and uh, who are aspiring to become assistant professor. But then I came as an assistant professor, and uh, you know the kind of things you have to uh, go through. They don't openly express, but uh, it is there. So you would have also experienced. And uh, But then with time, they accepted. In fact, uh, they used to call me Chinnapaya. I know Ramakotishwa used to be there in MDS lab. Uh, so I was very, uh, they were very affectionate. 
in fact because of my dual uh, laboratory ownership most of the time i will be in the machine design section so some of the people in manufacturing did not like it this fellow is selected for, to work with us but uh, is going very often to the other lab and other lab had a very nice arrangement every month they will go out for a movie then also have some kind of a dinner and it was going to kind of you know in, interesting mm -hmm. so that was a thing i'm back in iit madras again it took some time for me to again uh, come to the full gear you know every break you have a delay this is a built into the system you have to come back establish yourself and start your research so i had uh, two three areas to dabble with so i had managed so in those days did you have enough uh, research scholars uh, uh, working not at all in fact now 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 i can see people are flooded they don't know how to manage also those days uh, only for the entire department eight risk scholars used to be selected for the entire department the department strength was around 50 it was 50 even back then oh, okay but number of scholars were very very less and then you have to wait for uh, at least 3 years to get the next scholar so that used to be the frequency so i got my scholar first scholar in 82 itself but uh, the then second scholar third scholar but uh, i was urging to do research i didn't know what to do but i am very good in programming so with my programming experience i could publish papers individual authors oh, so at one point of time i had more papers of uh, individual name than jointly so you know it, it has to be managed you can't always expect a research scholar those days particularly now you get more than what you want and what in those days uh, what was the average time that a research scholar took to See, complete yeah. a phd is it comparable to what it is now or? no those days we had a, you know, a regular program and uh, also the qap usually qap people they get 3 plus 1 so that they don't want to leave that plus 1 plus 1 is advantageous to uh, them so they go to 4 years even if they complete by 3 years they took uh, take time to write and then go up to 4 years what is the uh, plus one for plus three one is uh, they are given time extension to write the thesis so when they are the research scholars here they have double advantage they get scholarship as well as their salary from the college I so see, i should I not see. tell the tricks and then no load out also no te teaching right, load right. so many people took four years even the brightest person with me also took four years other regular scholars you uh, know they take three to four years there are very few who completed within three years um, i can count them on jagadish kumar lv mohan and prof i mean right now samuel gl samuel who is a professor right now with us exactly 3 years they completed but now it's taking more time and this is my feeling so teaching wise uh, what were some of the uh, uh, some highlights from your uh, teaching teaching experience uh, in fact um, i didn't want to tell you in 89 uh, you know near close to 90 Uh, there was a german uh, aid program whereby manufacturing engineering got huge sum of money and uh, there was also exchange of faculty uh, then i know we are all waiting then suddenly there was a call from usa which you can take saying that we will be interested in coming here for a short period i said what is this it's a just a visiting appointment for 6 months why don't you try so i still remember professor sam pandit who called me those days calling over phone is very expensive so then i said yes so when all our people were going to germany for short visit i went to usa See, this uh, sometimes it happens you know they go in the west i go to the east or vice versa then um, those people uh, extended it by one more year and uh, at the end of my sabbatical they even said why don't you continue with us 
but again same balancing whether to stay back professionally and this time one more factor my wife so my wife has to be convinced so i said uh, you come over there for short period she came to usa stayed for 3 months and I, finally i said it's your decision okay. professionally i think it's good for you if you are here she is quite uh, shrewd but uh, girls I, my first daughter was in teens and second one is going into the teens and then you know <laughs> the pressures and said uh, we will go back to india so that was my another institution where i moved and came out also uh, you said you asked about teaching uh, teaching iit bombay and iit madras is quite different uh, and there we have to give the course plan like uh, american universities you have to go by the course plan evaluation according to what you announce in that right madras you can just walk in say anything and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and conduct the examination you know i found that to be really more autonomy more autonomy there and uh, in fact it's in a way, in a way good because you can uh, explore new things you can also introduce new uh, topics so whereas in iit bombay it's all structured if you want to introduce anything new it has to be at the pg level and um, so after coming back from usa uh, of course there are many interesting incidents one incident i would like to recall uh, see those days there were no ts for the teacher you have to teach you have to also conduct uh, examination you have to be there during the examination and correct the papers so and i you uh, know i corrected the papers and then uh, one person came to me saying that sir you did something wrong with the totally i said what is wrong normally Uh, the students they try to come even if half a mark is less because this competitive spirit they pick up from je i think half a mark is less they fight saying that sir that half a mark you should give me whereas uh, this person who came then you will see the totaling i total instead of 40 somewhere i counted double count it was entered as 45 no 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 you see that you give what i deserve normally people don't come why do you insist no 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 i insist that you know i should give me the exact marks so from 45 it was reduced to 40 very interesting case and uh, that person is none other than you <laughs> it is uh, at that time I'm, i you know i noticed that this girl is different maybe we will have a chance to yeah, meet again it's interesting that um, you remembered that incident uh, yeah and uh, i didn't when i uh, wrote to you from the us uh, you know 15 years later after I, my btech i was hod at that time you were hod at that time and uh, i wrote to you uh, saying i'm interested in coming back as faculty and uh, you recounted this incident which i had completely uh, forgotten about Uh, but again that's one more instance of your phenomenal memory because uh, i think you were one of the teachers who was very very particular about attendance yeah. you had yeah. meticulous attendance records and, uh, students used to uh, and i think uh, the other teacher never took attendance and i think probably the institute has sometimes relied on your attendance records to verify if someone was a student or not <laughs> right. right yeah so can you tell us uh, <laughs> a little bit about that <laughs> that was a bit strange incident uh, one student you know belonging to the 92 saying that he belongs to 92 batch you are also 92 batch yes. uh, so then uh, came saying that uh, something happened uh, in his personal life he lost all his certificates and including the degree certificate so next day he had to go for interview in the lnt so he needs some kind of a letter saying that Uh, he was a student of iit madras then uh, he went around he, you know he said i only th- thought you are there so why don't you give me a certificate i said let me verify check up and then and casually asked him oh you belong to 92 there is one girl only one girl in that batch okay. am i correct yeah. no other girl in your batch <laughs> no, no he said some blah blah he said 
then I, you know, I became a little bit cautious. This fellow is not a, see, normally in a class, they remember a number of girl students, at least not the names. So, uh, I, in my college of engineering, Gindi, I, there was only one girl in our mechanical. I, we know. So, number of girls are very few. And then I said, give me some time. I will check and tell you. So, I took the entire record of all attendance register over the years. And then uh, I told him, see, your name is not here. Then, you know, he pretended, oh, God, what is that I have done, you know, no record is there. In fact, even uh, he went to the hostel. He stayed in uh, TT Narendran's hostel. He, in, he went there and even checked there. They were not able to get. I said, you are, uh, no, I am not, I cannot give you any letter. Oh, he because, claimed to have stayed in uh, that hostel? In that okay. hostel, Ganga mm. hostel, okay. for which our uh, TT uh, yes, Narendran TTN was, was the warden. warden. So I said, uh, hostel stay. I will not be able to certify if you attended a class. But one more senior professor, very you know, nicely, you know, he, yes, I remember he attended my class, etc. I don't want to give the name. I don't go by that. I go only by my record. So it's not there. And uh, then the person who brought him to me, I told him, you take him away immediately. Otherwise, I had to take action. So he disappeared. So, so was, this the, the, was this the time you became? Was this around the time you were chief vigilance officer, or was uh, it was that later? Uh, that or was later. That was maybe later. this is what uh, right. prompted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, vigilance officer, I think you know, was, uh, Professor Anand you know, said, "Why oh, don't you take care of it?" That was much later, uh, before becoming HOD. So you've also been warden of uh, a hostel. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, any interesting stories there? Okay. <laughs> I was warden of uh, Alakananda Hostel. In uh, 1993, I took over. And that was uh, then, uh, that sometime in July, I took over as a warden. There was again some unrest in the hostel. Uh, it's a little uh, incident which I uh, like to forget, but still it happened. Uh, one of the mess worker misbehaved with me and uh, I had to file a complaint and then uh, it went on for some time. Uh, he even called my family. I said, uh, be, uh, ask your husband to be careful uh, and threatened with uh, dire consequences. But then I told my wife, don't worry, things will be all right. But uh, that was one bad incident. Otherwise, the student side, I could do many things. In fact, those days they didn't have a computer. Uh, you know, we bought a computer, and uh, there was also a system of calling when there is a telephone call. So they used to call from uh, downstairs. Uh, the room number three one. There is a call for you. But then uh, other houses had a speaker a PA system. Uh, my boy said, "We don't like PA system. We want to be natural." I said, "Forget it. We'll uh, you know give if you want to be natural. You don't use it." So. A lot of things we did, and uh, I liked that period, except that one small incident. I think in any job, it's likely to be there, so it's better to forget. <laughs> uh, um, your entry into IIT Madras uh, started off with uh, uh, your achievement on the sports field, and I think uh, uh, you were also sports advisor at some time, and over the years, uh, your involvement with uh, sports continued. Um, can you take us through the, your sports journey here at IIT Madras? In fact, uh, as a student, I just played only for one year for IIT Madras. But then uh, in 88, I think Professor Nandarajan was the dean at that time. So he asked me to be the sport advisor. So I took over as a sports advisor and uh, personally got involved in every game. And, and, uh, and, uh, then 89, I went to USA, there was a break, came back. Uh, then uh, I also played for uh, IIT staff team. In 95, I won gold for IIT Madras at the age of 40, eh? yeah, 40. Volleyball? Uh, volleyball, 45, at the age of 45. Then I decided that I cannot play volleyball anymore because I was a spiker. Spiker requires extreme fitness. Though I was fit, 
point. I had a fear that body may go up and <laughs> come down. My soul will fly out. This is the kind of feeling. So it's better to hang your shoes at the appropriate time. And interestingly, uh, I have to mention one thing. Uh, somewhere in the early 90s, uh, one professor from IIT, uh, Anna University, invited me to give a keynote speech in a conference. So no, no, I, my bio data, I always used to have this sports activity um, of mine, saying that I represented uh, uh, Coimbatore uh, for two years. Coimbatore division I represented during my college days, and then B, I was a captain. And then, uh, then he quietly removed it. Then I asked him, why did you remove my sports achievement? No, professor, if I read out this, people will not take you seriously. An yeah, academic person should have only academic background. So, <laughs> it was something unusual. See, that kind of thinking, in fact, uh, many people think that sports is an Im in impediment to academics. Uh, in my personal experience, sports only helped me. In fact, uh, it gave a confidence, not only that, try, there's nothing wrong, you can try. Even if it is, there's a failure, we know how to face the failure. But that's one thing you know you learn from sports. Uh, particularly this year, Olympic year, I want to tell the youngsters that staying away from sports activity, you may think you may gain some time. It's not so. There are certain qualities which come with sports and particularly facing the failure. And uh, in fact, now uh, after uh, playing so many game, matches, I can face failures as well as success equally. So that's uh, that kind of a tune. Very important uh, point because I think uh, over the last several years or ever since I came back as faculty, I've noticed that, you know, because of uh, the devices, you know, everybody is just hooked on uh, to either their uh, laptop or uh, phone. Uh, you don't see many people uh, playing outside in the hostel quadrangles. Or drastic change I saw. Before, when I was a warden, I never allowed the students to stay inside their room after four or five, pull them out, make them play games. But once the laptop came in, my God, everybody goes to their room, lock, lock up and keep seeing this. In but fact, uh, it's a very pathetic situation. And I think the last two years have been really miserable in that sense because people have now been forced to do that because uh, your uh, you education, talk. your entertainment, everything is in that device thanks to COVID. So I'm hoping once COVID is behind, people will realize the value of uh, being outdoors, of uh, participating in sports and uh, I'm hoping that they will be so sick of their devices over the last two years that we will get back to a more healthy uh, 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 lifestyle uh, again. We are proud that we have a large population of youngsters, but large population of youngsters mean nothing. They must be fit also. How many, what percentage of that population is fit? That's what decides the number of medals we get. So going by the number of medals we get in the Olympics or any game, I see it's not at all up to the level. Okay, so being... And yeah, even in a place like IIT where there are so many facilities, there is no lack of facilities. So it would be uh, so nice to see I still remember that. that instant where my bio data, they have removed everything and saying that academics cannot have other activities. <laughs> uh, then, uh, of course, my sports activity is still continued. In 2008 also, there was an inter IIT meet. 2008 or so, yeah, when I was HOD. And then I coached the team. Not a physical coaching, uh, mental coaching. Okay. <laughs> Most of the times, the players need advice, correct advice, mental coaching, then the physical coaching. Then they won gold in that particular year. Now I don't know what's happening. I don't go to the sports field. So when did you take over as uh, the head of the department? Uh, see, after the completion of, uh, of course, uh, 2006, if I remember correctly. So uh, in October, so I took over as HOD. In fact, in November only, I received a letter from you, that mail, 
2007. Seven, but you joined? No, 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 no 2007. No, you are in. Yes, yes, yes. No, don't yeah, uh, don't correct, correct, don't correct. check my memory. <laughs> 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 right. 2007, you yeah, came here yeah. and then first appointment was a visiting appointment. Right, right, uh, so, right. don't make me. 2008, January I came, but 2007 I got the appointment, yes. Right. So, um, so, oh, so you had just taken over as HOD. Just taken oh, okay. as HOD. And uh, it was a good time. I had a very good uh, office to support me. Sundari and uh, many other people, very able to people. In fact, the load on me was much less. I had to only do the decision making. All the papers, the moment a person comes in, front desk will ask the name. Their file will be ready on my table. So I just have to flip through. I know the background. So that was the kind of support you need when you are uh, the HOD. I got full support and uh, more than that, you know, in fact, the acceptance, it shows acceptance by our mechanical engineering faculty, you know, staff members. Uh, particularly giving me an uh, opportunity to serve as a HOD because it goes by consensus, I, as you know. So, I, first I got acceptance on the very first day from the students' community, then I got acceptance from my, my own colleague. No, getting acceptance from others is much more important uh, than doing in something individually. So, uh, that year, very spe uh, no, special is that we had a Golden Jubilee in 2009. And by the time we had joined, mm, yeah. we, I was asked to address the German delegates who, who were there at that time in the uh, initial stages of IIT formation. So that was a nice meeting and you are also there at that time inviting some people. I still remember, I have the video. Right, um, many of our retired, uh, retired faculty, faculty also, also came by. Come. Professor that. Pillay, that was a very Professor, nice. Uh, yeah, Professor Pillay, mm. Professor Radha Krishnan, Professor Parameshwaran, uh, many people were there. That was a nice get together, Golden Jubilee. And during that time, we organized something like six to six international conferences during that period. Uh, two uh, or three from our own section, and one from uh, design also. That was a nice uh, thing to be a uh, head when there was a Golden Jubilee celebration. You superannuated in 2014, is that right? And uh, we had uh, organized a conference in your honor at uh, that time. Uh, Professor Samuel uh, uh, was uh, leading that uh, effort and uh, it, it was, uh, you know, we had uh, your students over the years, mm. many of them had uh, uh, come, I think it was in the ICSR auditorium, ICSR, the it was in the uh, ICSR auditorium uh, uh, for, for that uh, function. Um, we had a felicitation uh, for you and I think I, I was really amazed at uh, how many people uh, uh, showed up. Uh, for that, your students uh, uh, through the years and many of them have done very well. Um, so your uh, memories from that uh, event and you know, uh, uh, what uh, was… Uh, research scholars. In fact, already. to single out a research scholar will be very difficult uh, because uh, no, they should not feel that I have forgotten one and then try, you know, trying to recollect. But some of them, you know, it was a really, uh, they were outstanding. In fact, um, I think what was special was a, there were a lot of personal stories that personal, were yeah. uh, shared. And I think uniformly all of them, I think the uh, central, uh, I mean, one of the uh, themes was that um, you appear very hard outside, but <laughs> you are... Uh, 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 but I, I you are very kind to, inside and I think all of them had... I uh, have to tell you the secret, secret, there is some secret in this. So when we were actually coached, you know, by the volleyball coach, one thing he told us, never show any, any fear on your face. You, are, you should have a, uh, no emotion on your face. And uh, that was basically every day it used to be the input. So even if there is a very big team, against us. We will never show that we are uh, afraid of them. And sometimes it helped. 
in fact, uh, even the best team we could win over. So, somehow it has become a habit that I ne never try to show my emotions. In fact, one of the person uh, who points out this in our meeting, DCC, you know, we have a regular uh, uh, DCC. Sir, we are not able to read your face. I said, if, if it is so, then give your opinion. I will give my opinion later. So, I will keep my face. I, I think it's uh, more uh, artificial, <laughs> never trying to show emotions. So, that is how people think that I am tough. But uh, when I no, when I interact one to one, it's a different issue, completely different. And many students I interacted one to one, went for their marriage, their family functions, and uh, some of them, uh, in fact, uh, one of the uh, students who came, did MTech with me in 82, after 20 years, he again came back to do PhD. Uh, my name LV Mohan. And he was analytically very, very sharp at that time, 82. So when I came back, uh, he wanted to do PhD. I said, is your analytical skill still there? I said, you test me out. So there is a book called Theory of Gearing by Litvin. Uh, it's a Russian uh, person, scientist. And I gave that book to him. I said, you try to follow this. So every day, we used to have a contact period before actual research program started. That's a QAP program. So every day he will say, sir, I have 40 pages I have derived from this and uh, this is how it's going on. At the end I asked him, now tell me what is not possible with this approach. Then he said, this is the one which cannot be done using this approach. He immediately said, yes, your research problem is finalized. So that was a person I cannot forget. One more reason is that uh, we did a very good work in, the, in worm gearing double worm gearing, uh, that's hourglass worm gearing. And uh, then uh, after some time, he developed some problems, psychological problem, and no more. It's uh, di di no, difficult, you know, even when I am somewhat depressed, he will come, sir, why are you, come, we will go. So he will pull me out, like, if, you know, elderly brother, uh, he used to behave, you know, move with me. So one example, everybody has their own way of doing. So it's no more, I cannot forget. He completed the work in three years, exactly three years time, with a very good publication in mechanism and mission theory. So that's our area. <laughs> so one of the, uh, uh, you know, I think you're very regular about your uh, tea break in the morning and afternoon with your colleagues right. in the uh, department. Um, is that something that, uh, uh, started a long time ago or? Uh... Yeah, uh, in fact, I used to go with the earlier period, the, our colleagues never used to come out. So I started going with my research scholars and uh, then on the way we discuss, sometimes good ideas come only during that walk. I tell you, not when you are sitting before the desk and trying to scratch the pad. So suddenly something will uh, show up. In fact, the same person, Mohan, while going, sir, sir, I was playing with the AutoCAD. I know I was. I just took a cylindrical workpiece and then uh, another pencil-like tool and tried to move over this. I could generate the helical form on this. Immediately, I said, "You are continuing this. You are doing this. You are doing this to produce a worm uh, on a lathe using CAD approaches." So he did that. In fact, that paper I, we sent to Machine Tools and Manufacturing, it's a leading journal. You won't believe, within one week, without any correction, paper got accepted. That's kind of a thing. Uh, no, ideas come when you walk freely without any you know, uh, uh, other obstructions. Uh, tea time is very important. Of course, off late uh, process, Ramesh Babu, myself, we started going regularly. That's when you would have seen us. He will call me, sir, tea break. And now I am missing his voice. So if exactly 10.30, sir, tea break. So all of us will come down, go, and come back. And you, are, I have seen you also with uh, <laughs> three mosquitoes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. so. By the way, Pratip has become a dean now. Pratap, Pratap, yeah, sorry, yeah. Pratap has become a dean now. Dean. So you, yeah, you, even you, ever since he moved to NPTEL, uh, he hmm. became very busy. Okay. So we weren't. Uh, he is one of those person who used to come with you for tea. 
Yes, yes, because he was my batchmate, uh, 92 metallurgy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and he was sort of, he, he was the one who pushed me to apply. He kept pushing me to apply to IIT Madras mm -hmm. when I was doing my PhD. Uh, he kept telling me, you know, you have the uh, age thing. And I was like, I've just started, you know, I cannot, I'll just take my chances and see. Uh, you mentioned that uh, when you joined as uh, STA, along with you, uh, Dr. Jay Prakash uh, also joined. Dr. Jay Prakash uh, happened to be the guide for my BTEC uh, project uh, here. Um, so, did you have any chance uh, to work with him later as uh, colleagues, as faculty? Uh, did you have a chance to work on any research together? So, in 1988, uh, I got my promotion to the next level from assistant professor and uh, Jay Prakash also went for his, his promotion uh, to assistant professor. He was advised by Professor Sri Srinath, he was the director at that time, to join some senior people to do projects and to improve uh, the, his performance. And uh, we were talking under the banyan tree, I still remember, and he was mentioning about this to me. And then I said, we will also, we will do a joint project. So I wrote a proposal for a pro project on gear technology to CSIR and it, it was approved. So that was the initial point. Then we were meeting very regularly. One day suddenly he brought a visitor to my room and I said, you have to meet this visitor. And he was uh, know, Mr. Uh, Rajendran. And, uh, I understood that uh, his kid was studying in Vanavani. It's a differently abled kid. So he came, sat with me for some time, and we were discussing many things. Then he said, Professor, you have, uh, now you have become professor. Why don't you do something for the society? There's some need uh, you know, in this area. And uh, first time, he was not successful. It's very difficult to convince a person like me. I said, fine, we will take, uh, think of it. Then. Continuously he was visiting me and then saying that, sir, you have to really think of doing something, some assistive devices for this. My son, I am able to get any equipment from abroad, but there are people in India who need this. So slowly, uh, you know, I yielded and then I also felt that after becoming professor, you know, you should do something to the society, which always says uh, survival of the fittest is the rule which is the animal kingdom rule, which I did not like. In fact, there are people who are not fit also to be taken care of. And I yielded and together we wrote a proposal, myself and uh, Jay Prakash, to Ministry of uh, Social Welfare at that time. So then this project on RGO, that was the device. Reciprocating yeah, gate yeah. RGO. Uh, this was the one he was using for his son. So he gave the model and then gave all ideas. So we started with the project. And then at that, around that time only you joined him for the project. It was on foot. Uh, on, on a knee. On, under, knee under knee. So I, don't know, I did not interact with you at that time, but uh, we were doing it. We also recruited a project uh, associate and then uh, he did his MS also. Quite uh, sometimes the second phase, we wanted to continue. One thing was on mechanical side, we could do anything what we thought of, but testing out was a real problem. We could not get the subject and we went to all the hospitals. Finally, Andhra Maigla Sabha, one subject we got to just test out, it is not sufficient. Uh, so I abandoned by the time uh, Dr. Jaya Prakash left for Malaysia. So the project came, you know, we could not continue. <coughs> I stopped. Uh, those devices were still with, uh, with me, it was with me. And uh, when you joined, I handed over them to you. Uh, and you are doing a very good work, you are continuing. And the kind of, uh, in fact, people have to be taken care of. That's one thing you are doing, wonderful. And uh, it's not the world of survival of fittest. Okay. So, you know, coming to, uh the importance of uh, uh, laboratory work, uh, you know, hands-on work. Uh, um, I think you were instrumental in setting up uh, 
the UGPG lab when you were HOD. Uh, can you tell us about? You know, our department has 10 labs, the conventional labs, but the 11th one was added uh, for drawing, you know, teaching drawing, computer aided uh, drawing. So that was, that became the 11th lab. And uh, then there was when I took over as a HOD, I did one thing which not many people do. I went to each faculty member and asked them to give two important suggestions, only two, which is in the uppermost mind, their mind. So I met all the faculty, they gave two, and then I collected all of them, and uh, many things were there, like, you know, HOD has to be fair, something like that. And uh, what is fairness, you know, I didn't go into it. But the facilities wise, they were saying that UGPG lab is one important uh, facility needed. Because the way we were operating at that time, you were also experienced, each lab will offer an experiment. The boys or girls have to hop from one lab to the other lab to, the, uh, to do the experiment. And sometimes the experiments were tied up with the research, call, uh, research setup and you can only look from a distance like an exhibit look and a demonstration was also not done. And for me, at least you also will agree, people have to do with their own hands. So I said we have to have exclusive lab and our uh, consensus from our faculty was also that we should have a separate UGPG lab. Then around that time we got uh, aid of something like 30 crores also uh, from uh, IIT Vendras for setting up the UGPG, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, assist, you know, strengthening the UG program. That was an uh, idea. Then nearly 5 crores, being a big department, we got a 5 crore, uh, to 5 to 6 crores uh, sanction from that money. And immediately we swing into action and uh, the money had to be spent by uh, March, whereas we got the uh, money uh, sanctioned in January. And spending 5 crores, uh, 6 crores in 2 months, is, you know it's how difficult it is. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, then we formed a team, Professor T. Sundarajan who became HOD after uh, me or after uh, Professor Sri uh, Venkateshan. So he was put as a in charge and then all the lab aids were made as a in charge. They have to propose and this equipment will be kept in an exclusive place. That is, how, that is the time biotech uh, also moved from MSB. You know, though we say MSB, it contained all the departments one wing of mechanical. So metallurgy was there, applied mechanics was there, you know, you must have seen. I said that when the ground floor space was vacated by Biotechnology Group, then we requested the director, he immediately said, yes, you can take over this. But we surrendered our uh, seminar room, which was not in a, in a good uh, aspect ratio. Uh, then uh, we started setting up this. And one happy thing is that the uh, equipments are available exclusively for the undergraduate students and PG students to touch and do experiments. And very interestingly, these equipments are much better than the equipments that was used as for research in the labs, respective labs. They can also come and use this, provided they don't interfere with the lab classes. That was the arrangement. And um, of course, people have different opinions. I was con convinced that this particular facility it became the 12th lab. It is still being run by the department. So that I will remember that as a one great thing which uh, I could do during my time. So the campus, you know, the uh, uh, you would have seen a lot of uh, changes uh, from the time that you were here uh, nearly 50 years ago. 48 years ago. So as a STA, I did not uh, get any quarters. I didn't come into the campus because it was a short duration. Then when I went to Bombay and came back, and uh, at that time, Professor Indresan was the director. And uh, I wrote to him saying that I now I have a family with a child, three-year-old child. My first daughter was three-year-old. I need some kind of accommodation. Immediately there was a reply from him, signed by him, an in inland letter. Those, those days inland letters used to be that typed. And then as soon as you join, you uh, go to the estate you know, section and then uh, they will provide you the accommodation. Then uh, I moved in 
I still remember D1 was a, a goddess allotted to me, D1 105. And uh, ab above me was uh, Krishnaya, and, and all the colleagues were Krishnaya, and opposite to me, Professor Yagnarayan of Computer Science, then above him. Uh, and Professor Junjunwala in, was in the ground floor, if I am correct. And on this side, Junjunwala, on the other side was Bhattacharya, Ocean Engineering. So, uh, very interestingly, those days, uh, milk distribution will not be like this. Uh, they used to come in the can, full you know, can. By 4.30 in the morning, they will ring the bell. You have to go with your vessels, then they will pour milk and you have to come back and continue your sleep. So if you miss it, then you have to go to the yard all the way to the Krishna hostel gate to the yard to collect the water. So then my mother was staying for some time with me. Professor Junjunala wakes up. By the time he drinks, he wakes up. Then Bhattacharya will not wake up. So he will say, Bata, milk, Bata, milk. <laughs> then my mother asked me, who is selling buttermilk? In the morning hours, 5 o'clock, I hear somebody saying, butter, milk, butter, milk. Is it butter, milk? <laughs> then I have to explain my, to my mother, it is waking up one person, butter, jaya. So I still remember. So then there are a lot of kids there. In fact, my second child was also born in this IIT campus only. They were playing very well. And uh, then, of course, uh, we moved to the D, D22. And then number of people around, around us came down. And uh, of course, my wife really enjoyed the stay. She was the president of ladies club. She was also the first uh, you know, uh, president of uh, Tech Kids, uh, the present Tech Kids. I don't know how it's functioning. And she conducted the graduation day for the kids. And so took so much interest. But that was after my second daughter got married. and went away. So they enjoyed, in fact, uh, my children enjoyed what I could not get peaceful time during my college, school days, I could give it to my daughters. In fact, uh, we lived as a uh, joint family. In a joint family, there will be always some noise. And uh, here, I thought I could continue to live there. But then first day, when I brought her to IIT, 23C, still remember, bus from Parshavakam, then I had to literally pull, take her out through window. I said, my daughter cannot go through this anymore. I moved in and then took the accommodation, then went up to C10 where we lived for nearly 12 years also. And you were also a regular walker uh, on the campus. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Not so regular like other people. So, but uh, I used to keep myself fit. So. I think this has been a nice trip down memory lane right, uh, right. Uh, because we have known each other uh, for so long as well because uh, you know you taught me when I was a BTEC uh, student uh, and then wh when I just looked up the IATM page uh, 15 years later you happened to be the HOD of the department and uh, uh, that's when I took a chance and wrote to you and uh, uh, I think, uh, I guess it helped me come back uh, to IIT as uh, faculty um, when you were the head of the department. And so it's been a nice, uh, uh, it's been nice going down this. Uh, you also jointly worked on yes, few problems. We've, we've had. Uh, two Remember students. our trip to Bangalore. Yes. Uh, to yes. one of the units, let us not mention the name, yeah. where they wanted us to examine the mechanism yes. and including the manufacturing errors. We suggested some projects, right. it didn't come through. Right, but right, then right. finally, we ended up taking a MS scholar yes. and then guided. That was a very successful uh, work. Uh, yes, yes. Then still we are doing something together. Yes, yes. yes. and. Uh, I think I have learnt a lot. I learnt a lot from you when I was a student here as well as uh, after I came back. I should back. also say I learnt a mechanism from you <laughs> to really incorporate the manufacturing errors into the mechanism. It's you know, uh, mutual. It's, you know, the thing is only mutual. Interesting uh, journey. But uh, you know, it, 45 plus years on campus and uh, you have contributed uh, a lot to this uh, institute. I think I feel very honored to have uh, had this opportunity 
uh, to take this trip down memory lane with you. I want to thank uh, the Heritage uh, Center for this uh, opportunity and I'll let you close with... Yeah, just to conclude, you know, myself and my family owe a lot to this institution. In fact, basically for the acceptance, the IIT Madras accepted us, system accepted us and also people in IIT Madras accepted us. Thank you.